Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video, I'm going to show you another subset or collection of pieces of fabric that I keep. I had a lot of people asking me about how I store my fat quarter bundles and my uh, jelly roll strips and things like that. And so I thought, let's jump in and do that today. Anyway, I had several viewers ask the question about how do I keep the smaller cuts of fabric? They were curious about where I keep pre-cuts and things like that. And so I'm gonna show you that today. We're gonna to talk about how things are stored. And I will tell you, like, I'd like to kind of redo this. It's my crafting cart is what I call it. It's an origami craft cart. I bought this thing several years ago on HSN. And I actually have a pretty old video of me unboxing it and showing it. And I will link to those if you want to check those out. They're pretty old. Uh, anyway, I got this thing. It was a great price. I think I got it on sale. That video probably talks about what I paid. Uh, the sad thing is you can't get it anymore. And I think that's too bad because it is a very nice product. And it's highly functional. And whatever your favorite craft is, this cart is a great way to store those supplies, but sadly they aren't offering this anymore and I'm sorry about that. It's the versatility of the cart that I like and the color is beautiful, so I think it's too bad they don't have that now. So I don't know what to say, but I'm just going to show, show you how I have this. I'll also tell you that uh, it's where I house my Ruby Star collection and uh, the Ruby Star drawer that you'll see uh, it's really full it's over full and what i need to do is to like uh, just pull everything out of this cart and reorganize it and now that i'm doing the scrap projects that i'm doing i can remove what i have in there as scrap fabric at this point i think and uh, put it somewhere else do something else with it use it if i can right now uh, if you don't know i'm like uh, uh, chest deep will say in 16 patch scrappy quilt blocks and I'm doing this to use up some of my scrap fabric it's just been sitting around and it was to the point where I had to add more uh, little storage cubicles for it and I don't want to do that <laughs> I'm not adding uh, I'm using what I have and I didn't know how far it would go I wanted to see what I could get at this point I'm up to uh, 31 finished blocks. I've got number 32 sitting over here on the work table uh, ready for me to put it together. So when I finish filming with you today, I would love to go ahead and just knock that one out. Then I'll have 32 and that is enough to do two thorough sized quilts, which I can't believe. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm actually gonna try to see if I can get to um, 50 blocks, so we'll see how far I get. But it's a great way to use scraps, and if you haven't seen that video, that has been very well received, and I wanna say thank you so much for watching that and for being so supportive, and I'm glad that it resonates with you. Okay, so without further ado, uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, kinda get behind the camera and uh, pan you over so you can see the cart and um, then I'll move in closer and we'll go ahead and start uh, just kind of taking a look at what's in the drawers. It's very tight quarters, so this will be interesting to try and film. I'm not gonna pull the cart out because it's so over full and we just had the carpets done in here following some water damage. <laughs> oh gosh, the water damage uh, from the fall. So following all of that uh, insanity, uh, we had new carpets in, and it's kind of thick. I probably overdid it on the carpeting, but you know, when you buy the stuff at Home Depot, they just have a little two by two square. You can't tell what you're getting. So I, I didn't know, okay, how plush is this? Because I didn't want to buy the contractor special because that doesn't hold up. And I wasn't trying to be Martha Stewart because, you know, that's not who I am, but 
Uh, I wanted something in the middle, and anyway, it's probably still a little bit nicer than I should have purchased, but it is beautiful. It's very squishy. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, so with that in mind, I'm not going to try to move this very heavy cart because, okay, so without any further ado, let me just get behind the camera. I'll talk to you a little bit about it, and then we'll go in close, and I'll show you what I have. Okay, here we are. I'm behind the camera, and there's my desk. I'm just going to pan over, and usually the desk is like really close to that. I moved it out of the way so we had space, and there's the cart, and it's next to my uh, bookshelf of my personal items, and I'm just going to show you the whole cart, such as it is, and uh, so it's got uh, like two big drawers and four smaller drawers, and then it's got two horizontal shelves. I mean, it's beautiful, this thing. And it's in that lovely turquoise color. And uh, it's got the, the wood grain uh, veneer. So I love it so much. Um, okay, so in the bottom large shelf, shelf, what am I saying? In the bottom drawer, that's where I have like my... Um, I would say just collection of everything. So it's full of jelly roll strips, fat quarters, there's other little supplies in there. Uh, there might be some yardage, I'm not sure. We'll look closer when we get over there. And then the second large drawer up, that's the, jar, the drawer of the Ruby Star. And um, I'm not gonna do a Ruby Star tour. I don't know if that's something that would be of interest to you all. Let me know if you wanna do a full tour and we'll talk about doing a Ruby Star uh, tour. Um, I, I know that's not everybody's taste, so I don't wanna be boring if it's not something you're interested in. But, uh, you know, I always love looking at it, so <laughs> I'm more than happy to share it. Oh, gosh, and the other four drawers, uh, to be honest, they're just kind of a mess. Um, it's a lot of scrap stuff. It's a lot of just um, supplies that I didn't know what to do with, so like elastics and things like that. Uh, I have made pajama pants in the past, and uh, so I still have elastics. I would like to uh, sew more of those, and I would like to start sewing some of my own little tops and things. Uh, I didn't do it before because I didn't like the way anything fits me, but I have been working quite hard on my health and my weight, and my weight is starting to come down, and I think I'm going to be interested um, probably by summer and sewing for myself. So anyway, we'll explore that later. So that's what some of those supplies are about. So, okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, break and I'll move in close where we can set up and see what's in the drawers and I'll show you what Here I have. Are, and, uh, I'm on the floor and I've got you down as low as I can take the camera and we're just start at this bottom drawer. And in here, this is kind of what I call my hodgepodge drawer. And it's mostly uh, pre-cuts with a few other things that um, I'm not sure why I put them in here. I just did. So anyway, um, let's see. What can we say? So these uh, pieces were a gift from a viewer. And she actually sent these to me in Christmas of 22. And I had started a video to show them. And uh, that's when my health went out the window and I just never could finish any of that so uh, this is from Kathy Kathy thank you it's still it's still in here that she sent me um, these really cute fabrics I don't know the collection and she sent me two little patterns to go with and I really like the gifts so that's in here and uh, this is actually this should actually be a scrap. So I think I'm going to add this to my uh, collection of stuff that I am uh, doing with my scrappy 16 patch blocks right now. Uh, this was in that same package I think from uh, Kathy, and uh, yeah, really cute Kimberbell cup of cheer. So this it looks like uh, charm squares and maybe fat quarters, I'm not sure exactly. 
This is a random jelly roll strip. This was something that tied a fat quarter and it's just a nice little piece of uh, canvas so I kept it. And uh, this this is like mainly my pre-cut stuff. So uh, I just sort of put it in here as neatly as I can. These are some pieces. I actually picked these up in Walmart. Um, actually, I like the colors. They're pretty good. So I got two of those from Walmart. Uh, let's see. These are all basically Joanne. Uh, no, actually, I think this was Walmart also. And I got uh, the cats to go with that blue. I thought that worked really well. The teal and orange. Anytime you do teal and orange, it works really well. I don't know what I'm making, but there it is. And I could actually put them over here, maybe like this. So this is uh, where I do all my fat quarters. Like some of them are fat quarters that I purchased in Joanne, and they're still wrapped in their Joanne packaging. I just put them in. And then other pieces were uh, leftovers or offcuts that I had and I wrapped them around cardstock and I did a video sh talking about uh, what I did. I think I cut my cardstock at like five and a quarter or something and then just wrapped all of my fabric and I still love this method because I can just so easily file the random cuts. So these are going to be a little larger than a fat quarter size but they're just in here. So uh, this would be another one that was my own fabric leftovers and I just wrapped it as though it were a fat quarter and put it in there. I think I'm going to add that to my scrappy uh, patchwork blocks that I'm doing. Maybe we'll put these in the front. So that's all of that. Uh, this was uh, a jelly roll package that I got on that last craftsy sale so this is still from that so we're in 24 so this has been hanging around for four years but you know you get the stuff and there's no way to get it again so just kind of going to hold on to it and savor it uh, these are some uh, Joanne fat quarters uh, I have made projects with uh, this collection I love this collection I wish I could get more of them I would buy some of this in yardage actually I liked it so much but uh, my Joanne is not great for uh, having fat quarter bundles. I don't know what that's about, but they're not that good about it. But I did see these and I liked them. You can never really have uh, too many of the lo low volumes. And I know a lot of us were just like so hot to trot on prints and color and this and that. And that is great. But you've got to have, uh, I think, I like a low volume for a background and uh, anyway these I thought were really quite nice and uh, sadly I don't ever see any of these on the the wall of quilting cotton so they get these cool little fat quarter bundles only rarely and then you can't get any more of them which is too bad this is the last bit of the uh, I gosh I forget the name of this collection um, this is another boundless, so this was from Craftsy, and I have made several projects using uh, this collection. I just love it so much, and I still have some of it in my yardage. And uh, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to use it, but it's a beautiful fat quarter bundle. And then uh, this is just sort of uh, a random bunch of stuff. And this is in here it in here because it goes with this. So this was a fat quarter bundle that I bought and I love this collection. This is the Angels Onward and Upward fat quarter bundle and uh, this uh, sleepy unicorn is part of this collection. I actually got this to make a pillowcase and I've never gotten around to it so it's just sitting in here with uh, this. Uh, this is, I've had this for eons, uh, Freedom Modemix. This is a, from Fat Quarter Shop. 
So I think this is probably something that Fat Quarter Shop put together. Yeah, curated by Fat Quarter Shop featuring Moda Fabrics. So this is just a really pretty, uh, like a patriotic type of thing. So when I come up with a uh, new uh, 4th of July or Patriot inspired uh, design, I'll probably use this. It's a gorgeous fabric. And uh, this I've had forever. There's an old video of me opening this. This is called Cheerful and it's uh, curated also by Fat Quarter Shop. And this is a lot of stuff from, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of her name. It's Chelsea and her mom. And I really like both of them a lot. This is one of their, or the mom's uh, designs. I don't know why I can't remember her name. I watch her all the time. Sherry. Sherry, Sherry O'Connell or Sherry Connell. You guys will know. Anyway, this is mostly her stuff, and I love this. I wound up buying this uh, on a uh, Christmas sale, because you know Fat Quarter Shop has those sales, 20% off at uh, Black Friday. And this was when Mom was in the nursing home back in 2020, so this has been here a while. And I think that's when I got this one. So these are just kind of hanging out. And honest to goodness, that is the bulk of my pre-cuts right there. And I'm just going to put them right back in, just as they were. But that's a lot of fabric. You know, this crafting cart, it just, it holds so much stuff. You can really, really cram the stuff in there. The only concern I have is that it's a little heavy. So those are those pre-cuts. And then uh, this is my basket of Ruby Star. So let me raise the camera a little bit. So oh, let's see what we have in here. This is a lot. This is um, some pre-cuts and also some yardage. And just kind of pull it out. I'm not going to... I'm not going to do like a full tour. I'll just show you the pre-cuts. Uh, this is a layer cake. That beautiful flower land. And uh, these were leftovers from the envelope quilt. They're just so pretty. I couldn't just get rid of them, you know. So someday they'll wind up in a project. This is <laughs> this is part of the sugar. And it actually goes with the, these. And there's a specific project in mind, and I need to go ahead and wrap these. It's like, you know, there's a lot of debate on the fabric storage and wrapping or not wrapping and, you know, on and on and on. Anyway, so, like, here's the wrapped. Here's the unwrapped. I mean, <laughs> this is so much easier to use, right? I mean, this is just sort of floppy in a bag. I need to wrap all of them. It's just, I would never go back to not wrapping my fabrics because I just can't really tell what I have. Uh, let's see what we have. Here is a charm pack. Food group. And let's see what we have in here. Uh, this is a little fat quarter bundle. This is all from the tomato tomato collection. I just couldn't resist it. I got this from Maker Valley and I uh, bought that at the same time that I purchased the uh, kit that I use to make my um, mismatch patchwork. Isn't it funny how we can remember that stuff? <laughs> and then I have these. Uh, these, I'll tell you when I got these. There was like a flash sale on Fat Quarter Shop and they had like, I mean it was a lot, like 30 or 40 percent off all Ruby Star. It was really significant. And that's when I bought these and got the, uh, the layer cake because all of the Ruby Star was on sale. And that's when I bought this. It's for a specific project. Uh, this is, these are, uh, so these are fat quarters over here. They're uh, from different collections. Uh, there's some different things I have left over. Um, you know, it was in a... Uh, Ruby Star Club for a while with Fat Quarter Shop. I haven't done that in a bit. So that's what some of this is. 
Um, these are from when I bought a collection, gosh, years ago now. This is, I still have. These are the what they call the canvas uh, materials. They are beautiful, and I wish I could get more of this. I wind up using these in, uh, actually, my food photos as, uh, like, napkins. Like, in food photos, like having really good styled linens just adds a lot to the photo and I have used these several times. Like this blue one I used, I know specifically with a, uh, a lemon, I think it was a lemon cake. And it looked beautiful in that recipe. So those are just all kind of tucked over here. This is just all uh, yardage, uh, some leftovers. This I got, I still have quite a lot of this probably just over a yard. Um, the, I love this print, first of all. I'm a, a freak for earrings. I love earrings. And uh, this is Regina Coleman Hale. I love her work. And I have used this print in several things, and it always looks good. It's beautiful. And I got it on, like, sale on uh, Stash Fabrics. She had it, like... Oh my goodness, it was like $3 a yard or something. It was insane. So I bought like four or five yards of it, and I love using it. So this is all yardage here. And you can see I've wrapped it all and tucked it in. This is a panel print. And then these are pre-cuts. So this one is from Stash Fabrics. And this is like a specialty bundle, and she just like mixed and matched several collections and put them all in here. And I haven't done anything with them. They're just hanging out. So they're there. Uh, this was a uh, Stay Gold Fat Quarter Bundle that I purchased. And it's so beautiful. So beautiful. And that's in here. This is a Golden Hour. Also quite gorgeous. I had the Golden Hour mini uh, jelly rolls. And I actually started projects with that, and that's going to be something for the channel. But uh, I started the projects, and I haven't been able to film anything about it. But it will come sooner than later. And then what's down here? So this is trims and things like that, and uh, thread. And the thread came with, I told you earlier, I had done the Ruby Star Club with Back Quarter Shop. And when you do the, they call it a quarterly club, you get... Uh, patterns and it, the patterns are designed to work with whatever your bundle is that quarter and I don't know I was never that crazy about any of the patterns they just weren't things that I personally would enjoy having or using or making oh what's interesting is here is the uh, that same print from Regina over here the earrings Huh. Anyway, so I just, I didn't love any of the patterns that they sent, and uh, I don't know. I, it got all messed up, it, it, you know, back to COVID, right? So, you know, that just screwed up everything. So I thought, well, I would do the quarterly bundle, and then it would be like, you know, every so much, every three months I would get a bundle, and it was like a budgeted thing. Well, it just got so screwed up, and stuff was coming whenever, and I wound up getting like three in one month, and it was it was a lot of money, and I thought, okay, I can't do this. <laughs> so I canceled that, and I have not done it again. Anyway, hopefully it's better now. So, like, this drawer is so overstuffed, and I need to clean out up in the upper drawers, which you can't yet see and disperse a little more evenly. That's it, guys. That's my whole, that's my pre-cut collection. That's literally it. It's not, uh, <laughs> it's not like, you know, cabinets and cabinets full of stuff. I'm just gonna put these back here just to kind of get them put away. I'll tell you what all these are for. These are all from the sugar and going to go with this panel print. I have shown you this on the channel. We opened this on the channel and I'm going to make it into a quilt and um, you fussy cut the center panels 
so what I want to do is, you know, if I say cut the panel, and then I'm going to do the star motif, and I'm going to use different things from uh, this, the sugar. And what I want to do is, you know, use the color theory to design the, the stars. So they'll be like, like little super interesting. Just, you know, play with the color a little bit. You know, a lot of, a lot of you talk to me how you're just um, really afraid of color and putting stuff together. And what I want to say is don't be afraid of it because you're not going to learn unless you physically do it. You know, clothing is not a spectator sport. You have to just kind of get in there and get your hands dirty and play with it to learn what's going on. Okay, that's that's my pre-cut collection. <laughs> that's seriously it. Oh my gosh, you can see this drawer. It's just barely going back. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm not going to like do the, all of the drawers because that just feels like a lot. But I'll just very quickly just kind of say... Oh, actually, I, I lied. I didn't mean to, but <laughs> this is this is another. Uh, it's not really a pre-cut. Uh, for a while there, Creative Notions was sending me uh, boxes to unbox, and a couple of things. I didn't feel like I could unbox on a schedule because once a month, it's a lot, and um, so I didn't feel like I could offer her proper exposure or justice to her work and she's sending me this stuff for free and I wanted to do a good job and it really is not my taste um, so I didn't want to continue accepting uh, fabric that was not really my taste so anyway there's a bunch of stuff in here I don't know what I'm going to wind up doing with that uh, this I'm not going to show you this is an upcoming project this is a project I've been sitting on for two years and this is getting made this year uh, this I just showed you recently. This was stuff I just purchased. And this is just more like leftovers down here. So we're not going to get into all the leftovers and stuff. Uh, this is <laughs> this is a scrap drawer. So yeah, a bunch of scraps. There's the earrings again. This, this shows up a lot. And oh, these faces. I love the faces. I wish I could get more of this. That's another Regina Coleman Hale. I love her work. I like all the girls on Ruby Star. They're all just, I don't know, they really speak to me in their designs. Uh, so just like a little bunch of off cuts. I don't know what I'm doing with all this stuff, you guys. I need to go through it and see if there's any more that I can incorporate into the, the 16 patch that I'm working on. Uh, this is just more leftovers and smaller scraps and, you know, whatever. And then this is the drawer from hell. You can't really see that one. Okay. Drawer from hell. Uh, this is a project that I have not uh, gotten to. Oh, you know what? This is for the a cat that I made from Scoots and Says. A uh, pattern. I told you this is a hodgepodge. Uh, this is something I've never made, but I thought it was so cute. But it seems kind of fiddly and complicated, but it's so cute. Little turtle pincushion. Oh gosh, embroidery floss. Uh, oh, this is something that I've been wanting to do for you. This is leftover cardstock that I used to wrap my fat quarters. Scale, just, you know, here's all the elastics. All kinds of stuff, just different things. So that's it. That's, uh, that's the pre-cut collection. I hope that you aren't disappointed <laughs> that it's not more, more stuff. But honestly, that's, that's quite a bit crammed in there. Uh, let me uh, hold on let me turn the camera okay I'm just gonna finish this up talking to you I'm just sitting here on the floor this is my desk um, yeah that's my pre-cut collection so it's not like this giant collection like sometimes I watch other people's work and they've got just you know <laughs> I don't know, stacks and stacks and stacks of fat quarter bundles. and But, you know, these people are fabric designers, and so it's usually their fabric designs, and they have, you know, they're comped all of this stuff. They're not paying for all of that. They design the fabric. They're paid as a designer to, to design it, and then they 
make projects from their work and then that's how they make their living. They're selling fabric. It's, uh, it's a quilt tutorial disguised as a sales vehicle to sell fabric. That's really what's going on. I'm sure you know that, uh, but some people may not. Anyway, um, because I'm a regular person working out of my house, I have what I have, and it's a fairly modest collection, but I will tell you, what, what I've really learned doing the Scrappy 16 patch uh, project, you might think you don't have that much, but when you start actually putting things into projects, a little bit, it might look like a little bit, but oh my goodness, it goes a long way. So I know good and well looking at that based on what I had from the other uh, small containers of scraps and how much I'm getting, it goes a long way. So where you run into an issue is with your backing fabric. That is like, to me, I won't call it a stumbling block. I would say that is like a huge issue when it comes time to uh, put your quilt together is the backing fabric because if you're making, you know, a large, uh, larger bed sized quilt, you know, you can be looking at, you know, five yards easily, you know. And, I, you know, I watch people doing quilt tutorials and showing stuff and it's like, oh yeah, and then you'll just need five more yards for your backing fabric. Like it's nothing. And, you know, you might be able to find your fabric for $12 a yard now. So that's, you know, that's 60 bucks. That's a lot of money. Is it right, 60? Yeah, 60 bucks. Uh, a lot of fabric is going uh, to $15 a yard now. So now you're looking at $75 just for backing fabric. That's a lot. For me, that's my stumbling block is the backing fabric because I just can't do that. I just simply cannot. And the quilt batting, you know, I only buy that on sale and I did recently purchase uh, from Joanne. It was an amazing sale. I broke my no spend, and, but it was one of the criteria where I said, okay, if this happens, I'll break the no spend. And I did it and I have four more uh, queen sized uh, packages of quilt batting. So I have eight of those ahead now. So that should last me a while. And, uh, but you know, again, the backing fabric. So what I wind up doing for that is I'll buy the, um, the snuggle fabric, the flannel, uh, Joanne, uh, on sale. Uh, but I, I don't know how long that's going to last because Joanne is not in good shape right now. So I don't know if you're paying attention, but Sewing Report is doing a pretty good reporting on that situation. And now, you know, you've got corporate coming to the stores. And when corporate starts coming to your store and nosing around and watching, that is the beginning of the end. Uh, and somebody else uh, reported that uh, there was like only two employees in a store at any time and that that's not good I mean that's not safe for the girls working and let's be honest it's always women so it's not safe on the girls to only be two of them in a store and it's it's really working them hard so and they're making minimum wage I mean so it's no wonder they can't keep anybody uh, but anyway I would say uh, if you have Joanne products you like and you can catch it on sale, you, you might want to grab it. Uh, my plan, probably next month, is to go in and see if I can uh, pick up the low volumes, uh, like five yards, and just get a few of them, and just put them away, because I know I'll use them, and probably some of the snuggle flannels on sale, and uh, just put them away, because I will use them later, and I have them on hand. Because once that's gone, that's a big resource we're not going to have anymore. Anyway, that's completely off topic. I'm just rambling at this point. And uh, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I feel like this was sort of a haphazard, totally unplanned video. And I uh, hope you enjoyed anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm hoarse. I have been sick this weekend, uh, but I'm, I'm on the vent. 
Uh, but I'm going to wrap the video up for now and just say, as always, thank you so much for being here, for watching, for supporting me, for supporting the channel. And uh, stay positive and just keep on sewing. And until next time, happy quilting, everyone.